Hello dear ones, hope you all are well and good. Uh, today I am at an international school named Hogeson International School. Maybe you can see the board behind, uh, that is Hogeson International School. So today I am planning to have a chat session with principal of the school, international school, Miss Julie. Talking about Miss Julie, she is a American, she is a native speaker, she settled here in Norway. So today we will have, normally you know we do talk a lot about British English, we do talk a lot about American English. So I was just wondering or I was just thinking why not to have an interaction session, a chit chat session with Julie. So um, we are really honored that Julie gave her precious time for us uh, you know to have this session. So let's meet this charismatic personality, Miss Julie. So here we have our beautiful, gorgeous Miss Julie. <laughs> As I promised, uh, she's here. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, before you know, getting into the session, I would really want to thank you for giving us your precious time, Absolutely. Julie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, normally we don't get this kind of exposure. We live in a very small town. So other than Hollywood movies, we have never heard anything, <laughs> you know, in American stuff. So I'm really happy that you gave a really good opportunity for us. So uh, Absolutely. can please talk about you also yeah, here thank yeah, and the you. school as well. So I'm so happy to be with you via video today. And I'm grateful for this opportunity. Um, hearing that, I think it's funny because so we live, I live currently in Norway. We're sitting in an international school here in Norway um, on an island called Kamle, which is just outside of the town of Hogesen. So this school is called Hogesen International School. And I am originally from the United States. I think um, they, yeah, okay. you were told that. I have uh, my American accent. Mm -hmm. So um, I grew up in the U.S. in a state called Colorado. And that's more towards the western part of the United States. So the far west is California. And then we're a little bit over where there's mountains and skiing. And that's where I come from is Colorado in the United States. So I have my American accent. And I have been living in Norway now for seven years. Um, I'm married to a Norwegian person who is actually from here. The little town that he's from is called Norheim, which is just across the bridge from where we're sitting now. And so um, we met and got married 16 years ago now. And I lived in Norway once before when we were first married for about a year. And it was very difficult for me. And so all of these questions, which I'm hoping to address for you ladies today, is really pertinent to my life. It was an experience that I had firsthand. It was difficult to move to a foreign country. Um, I did not speak Norwegian at the time when we moved here the first time 16 years ago. And although a lot of people in Norway understand English, perhaps speak English, it's still not their native language. And so people are more hesitant to speak English with you. One of the questions was, um, that piece of confidence and familiarity, if it's not your native tongue, uh, people would say like, oh, I understand English, but I don't want to speak it with you because of my fluency of being. And everyone often would say to me, oh, I love your accent. I love your dialect because that was the American dialect that they were familiar with, right? So from movies and so I thought it was so funny that you said that, that we know English from Hollywood. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's so many, uh, like children here, especially my children's friends, and they'll say, oh, it's just like the movies, or yeah. oh, that thing you made is like what I've seen in a movie. And they're yeah. always referring to our life in Norway as like the movies. And it's not like the movies. My American <laughs> upbringing is not, I'm not like Cameron Diaz. I've, so I had a very different upbringing than a Hollywood movie, but... Um, that's the reference yeah. that people have. So um, what was I going to say? Oh, so when I moved here 16 years ago, it was very difficult for me from riding on buses and the slight in way that I was pronouncing things and a bus driver wouldn't even understand what stop I was referring to. And uh, it was difficult to assimilate to a new country and a new language. And although people do speak English here, yeah. I think quite well. So in Norway, all students study English from grade one, and that's in public school, but it's only one portion yeah. of their day. Yeah. So they have Norwegian class, math, 
science, social studies, and then one period of English. And certainly one hour of English is not enough, enough. a day to be fluent. Our school is an international school, so we follow the IB, International Baccalaureate Curriculum. Mm -hmm. And so all of our subjects are taught in English. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Norwegian language and we offer Spanish. So the kids are hearing English mm -hmm. seven hours a day yeah. instead of one. Yeah. And so obviously our students are fluent in English. Yeah. Um, our school has a variety of backgrounds. So we're a very small school. We have under 100 students, but we're very diverse um, between our staff members. So we have about 15 people on staff, teachers and assistants and administrative yeah, receptionists. And then all of the students and all of their parents, when we look at the total population of our community, we have over 35 countries represented wow. in 100 people. So, or more than 100, obviously, with all the parents, but it's, it's quite diverse. Yeah. And it's really exciting to have such a diverse background at this little right. town yeah. in this little in countryside, Norway. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's very much like farmland, and there's more sheep, I think, out here than there are yeah, people. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. So, um, so I love the diversity of our school. Yeah. I love that we have students from India, yeah. we have students from Japan, we have uh, several students from Europe, European countries, Poland, yeah. Czech Republic, mm -hmm. um, the UK, and so we have all this. Do you need to pause it? Are you fine? Okay, sorry. Uh, we have, you know, all these different accents and dialects and um, our population of students is also very mixed. So we have several families that are similar to my own situation. My husband is Norwegian. I'm English. English. Our children were born in America, so they are fluent in English. In English. And we pretty much speak probably 50-50 Norwegian and English, English at home. Yeah. They often speak Norwegian with their papa and they and speak English, English with, with me. Yeah. Um, so my children are fluent in English. So several of the kids in our school yeah. fall into that similar pattern. Maybe the mother's Norwegian yeah. and the father's from Australia. Yeah. Or the mother's from the UK and the father's yeah. Norwegian. So those children often have an advantage that they speak they English. Speak good English. And yeah. then we have several families. We have several families within our school from India. Yeah. But that have been living in Norway, no, the really. parents have been here for maybe yeah. 15 years yeah, or more working. Right. Yeah. And so the children were actually born in Norway. So they're Norwegian by birth and they speak Hindi or at home and then they speak perfect English and Norwegian. Yeah. So that's another kind of group of uh, expat people that have moved to Norway or families that are here on a contract. Yeah. We have two different families that are um, sea captains from Japan and they're here for like three years. And then they'll go back to Japan. Mm -hmm. And so they want their girls learning yeah. English. English. Yeah. It's not practical yeah. to move back to Japan yeah. knowing Norwegian. Yeah. <laughs> Norwegian why. is not a very practical language yeah, anywhere English. else in the world. Yeah. Um, and so they're learning English. And then we just have a population of Norwegian children that yeah. are full Norwegian okay. that are just good at language. Yeah. Similar to these girls that yeah. we heard on the video, yeah. that yeah. they have an ear for language, that they want to learn the English language, or perhaps they want to go on to study in the UK or the US. For the highest and, studies. Yeah, yeah, and that they want English proficiency. Yeah. And so then we have several children that are Norwegian that want to learn English. Oh, wow. And that's why they're here. Yeah. Yeah. So can you think, do you want me to uh, explain more background or should I answer uh, some of their yeah, questions? Yeah, so be before going to that, I yeah. have some set of questions. Okay. So uh, before going to the question, I would like to talk a little bit about our school, which I am representing. This school is called BSS Gurukulam. And the term Gurukul is like a concept in ancient India. It was like, you know, Guru, Guru, you know, teacher. Yeah. Teacher and student have kind of divine relationship here and it's like a family. You know, we live, you, they live together with the teacher. They help him in the household work and same time, you know, they study. So we embrace this culture and we embrace the title Smappy School that basically smart and happy. Okay. End of the day, it's not just you're smart, you're happy. Mm. So that is what, you know, we need most in the life. We all live for the eternal happiness. And uh, the, 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 what you say, principle behind the school is religion of bliss. Mm -hmm. or rather happiness so we we are from the southern part of india the, the the extreme southern end which is called as i told you in the conversation it's called kerala yeah and that is land of coconut 
Uh, so I'm I'm really happy that you know I I never thought that we would have a session like this, but uh, you know really happy that you gave so much of time for us. Of so now I think it's time for me to get into my set of questions. Yeah. After that, we'll interact with our students. Okay. I mean they have asked you some questions. You can answer them. So my first question is uh, that's already been answered. You have introduced yourself. I just wanted to know what is the motive of the school, Hogeson International School. Like how I said, for us it's like um, in curriculum it's like more Holding as a good human being, end mm -hmm. of the day, you mm -hmm. realize that you have to be happy. You know, so same way. What is the motive of the school? Yeah, how do you Yeah, school? so similarly, I mean, we want. Uh, I mean, I put really big emphasis on emotional and mental well-being. I want these kids to be happy. I want them to want to come to school um, within the IB curriculum, which is what we follow, the International Baccalaureate curriculum. There's these things called learner profiles. Right. And they're like soft skills that everyone needs in life. It's about being open-minded, about being inquisitive, oh, yes. about yeah, being honest, um, being a good communicator. Exactly. Certainly, not only just in spoken language, but yeah. how do we communicate with people? Yeah. How are we a good listener? How are we empathetic? Right, having empathy for others, um, and so that's and then. Our big kind of motive is having a global perspective, yeah. being open-minded to yeah. other cultures, other language, other ways of doing things that we want these kids to not think of. Norwegian people and Norwegian culture is very traditional, and I love that. I love the history of Norway. But I have found often hearing things like, um, oh, that's just how we've always done things. Mm, yeah. And I think that's such a closed-minded, yeah. limited of the box, way you know? yeah, to think. That I want these children to be thinking out of the box. To say there might be another way to go about things. That we shouldn't always do things how we we just always did it that way for the last 200 yeah, years. That's right. But rather, is there a more innovative way to think? Yeah. Is there? And so that's what I would hope comes yeah. out of this yeah. school is that people are open minded, yeah. world global thinkers yeah. and are willing to kind of press the boundaries yeah. and, and be and a be, good human being. Be good human being. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. So, and my second, mm. so how far this English language has helped you in Norway? We, we talked about the, you know, first thing they don't understand your accent those were the disadvantages mm -hmm. so what were the advantages being a native speaker i personally when i speak i think i'm pretty okay in english <laughs> so when i speak english i mean people do oh you, you speak good english you know so i i have experienced that so what is the advantages of uh you know speaking english in yeah. norway yeah. how far it helped you i want to well i mean i'm in this job <laughs> at an <laughs> international school my background is in education yeah. so having a master's degree in education i think probably helped yeah. uh but i mean certainly I think it's advantageous in that I can communicate with people. I mean, one of the questions is what percentage of the world's population speaks English? If I moved here from Russia or Poland or only speaking yeah. Hindi, yeah. I certainly couldn't communicate. Uh, just with... on this note, India, there are different authors. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Hindi. What um, we speak is Malayalam in Kerala. Okay. Yeah, it's a totally different yeah, language. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. But what I was saying is if I spoke Russian yeah. or I couldn't communicate with yeah. people in Norway. Yeah. So certainly English has been to my advantage yeah. that it's a universal language. language. But I also feel it's been to my disadvantage yeah. in that lots of people speak English. Yeah. And so I feel like my Norwegian uh, confidence yeah. has been limited because often if I get to a point where I yeah. don't, if it's a difficult conversation yeah, if it's yeah, context or yeah. words that I'm or especially if I'm on the telephone I don't know if you ladies feel this way but I think talking over the phone and not having a context for something not seeing visuals or but if someone's speaking fast in a foreign language yeah. on the phone it's difficult yeah, for me that's right and so often if it gets too hard I will just say kind of suck angles yeah. can you speak English, English yeah. and then I just quit yeah. <laughs> and then they this often say like yes well. no problem yeah. so you know I'll call Utdanings Directorata which is like the head of education in Norway and if it gets to be too difficult of a conversation, I'll just yeah, quit yeah. and I'll say, oh, can we just take this in English? English yeah. So that's my advantage yeah. because most yeah. people yeah. can. And the disadvantage is I should be better in Norwegian. You will always yeah. be in your comfort zone and yeah, you don't yeah. want to get out of the yeah. language. So if, but, you know, if I only spoke Russian, yeah. I would have to learn That's Norwegian right. because right. they, I couldn't say yeah. Kondus Because Norwegian. you don't have any other right. they, option. Most people on the other line of the phone wouldn't say, yes, I can speak Russian and answer me that way. But they can speak English. English. So that would so be my advantage. advantage. And 
disadvantage. disadvantage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. My last question. Like as we said, we we have a multicultural here in the school, uh, but there there is a tendency for pe people uh, stay if, if we are in Kerala. So we have a tendency to speak in our mother tongue, mm. right? So here, though it is you know diverse culture, but still children do have a tendency to speak in Norwegian. So how do you make sure that the children stick to English? I mean, is there any strategy or is there any plans? Do you follow? Yeah, I mean. As far as Norwegian goes, I think to some degree we encourage that they also keep up with Norwegian. I mean, one of the things that I will say, especially for children that are going to be here for the long term, is that they do need to know Norwegian. Yeah. If you're going to live in Norway, you should know the language of your country. That's right. And so I think a lot, I mean, certainly in class, we encourage them to speak English. Yeah. But if they're out on the playground and it's in more social contexts, yeah. if they're more natural speaking Norwegian yeah. with their friends, I don't know that we limit it. Yeah. I think they kind of fall in and out of language naturally. Yeah, yeah. And so we just, uh, but certainly when it comes to the context of learning yeah. and during the Norwegian block of language yeah. time, they're only to speak Norwegian. Norwegian. And obviously if they have questions or they're not yeah. fluent and yeah, they need yeah, to ask something ask in English, of course the they can ask. Um, but certainly, I mean, we encourage them to mostly speak English. That yeah. this, and I think by default, for the most part, they do. Yeah. They don't really fall back into their, yeah. yeah. A couple children, fall, mostly, you yeah. know, like I said, we have girls from Japan. We have yeah. uh, families from, we have two different families from Poland. Yeah. But I rarely hear those kids like speaking Polish with each other. I think yeah. it's almost reserved for their home. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they speak That's with their family. Family. Here and they here speak English, like English. And yeah. it's kind of the context and the domain for what they're from. So it's like when you walk through this door, everyone's speaking, speaking English, English. And they just do kind of by yeah. default. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's my question. Okay. I'm done. And uh, I would like you to go to our students. Uh, yeah. and they have asked some questions to Judy. So they are representing our whole school. So these are the questions which asked whole the we we are like two thousand students in the yeah. school, you know, from the LKG, what they say, from the kindergarten yeah. to the twelfth standard. Okay. So they are representing the whole crowd, awesome. and uh, we have uh, answers uh, here with Julie. Yeah. So first one is uh, Samreen. Samreen is from eleventh grade. She has uh, some questions for yes. uh, her. Good morning. First of all, I would like to thank Miss Julie for giving us such a sublime opportunity and for spending your valuable time with us. And I would also like to thank Ms. Sandhya ma'am for giving us or for introducing such a gentle personality. So let me go ahead uh, with my first question. Your experience of the world is one of the most valuable speaking tools that you possess. So ma'am, what's your opinion about this statement? Or what do you think? Is this true or not? And uh, let me move on to my uh, second question. I would like to know your perception about this. Roughly, in your perception, what portion of the world's population is fluent or competent in English? And my third question is, the English language is conventionally divided into three historical periods. Is this statement true or what's your comment on this statement? That's all is my part and thank you so much. You can yes. answer that. Okay, so first I wanted to tell you three ladies, I think you did an excellent job asking your questions. You're all beautiful and poised and I think your English is excellent. So you should be very proud of yourselves. I was truly impressed. Um, but I also really just touched my heart at how polite you were. And um, so thank you for recognizing both of us in terms of our yeah. time. And um, so I was, I was really touched by your video and your questions. But I also think that you're all very um, talented linguistically. So keep it up. So um, some, somebody, Samreen from the 11th, Samreen, grade. 11th grade, she had some difficult questions. I felt like I was being quizzed. <laughs> so she talked about um, what I felt was the competency in English in terms of the population of the world. And we actually had to Google it. I would have guessed if you would have just asked me, I would have thought a much higher percentage in terms of uh, maybe not a fluency in English, but certainly understanding of the English language. I think English is 
the universal language right. for the most part. Um, and so when I Googled it, it's saying only about 20% of the Earth's population speaks English. And if you would have just asked me off the top of my head, I would have guessed higher. Maybe. Clueless. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was clueless. So she asked me like a very explicit yeah. question in yeah. terms of the population. She also asked about English language being divided into historical periods. And we both had thought we were only thinking kind of old English yeah. and like and Shakespearean English. English. And then modern or current and so, and again, they were saying what you said, that it was divided into three historical periods, old, middle, and modern. But I don't know that that was much more that I can elaborate on. I'm not an English teacher by background. My background is in science and um, art, actually. So, And then one of her questions that I thought was quite good is... Um, if I thought um, exposure to the world, and I'm assuming that means in form of travel and study and is a good language tool, and I would say absolutely. I think travel is so important and to be exposed to other cultures and Lat traditions languages. and languages, I think it, it tunes your ear. I have, both of my children are quite good in language, but I have one boy who's a, he's very musical and he just has an ear for language and we travel quite a bit as a family and pretty much everywhere we go he tries to pick up phrases yeah. and he's I mean he kind of makes it his uh, you know and certainly with technology now he'll go on some kind of translation app yeah. but you know if we're in Germany he really tries to speak German and if we wow. go and he try and he just he's got a good ear for language and so I think absolutely exposure to the world is a good language yeah. tool yeah, right. get outside your box yeah. get outside of your familiar your area get out of your comfort zone yeah, and, and travel so I would encourage that yeah. so the next next student. is a Farha she's in the 10th grade she has some set of questions for Julie yeah hi Miss Julie I'm Farha Ahmed Abbas of Great 10 from the God's own country with you I'm extremely grateful to Miss Santia for opening a doorway to me uh, for having an encounter with you and Miss Julie I'm sincerely grateful to you for being a part of the session and also for being kind enough for answering all of our questions related to the English language in the session. Now, uh, I have prepared a few questions in here, uh, which I have noticed uh, that I find difficulty in while communicating in English. And I hope that... Uh, you you will be able to uh, clear all of my these questions and clear all of my queries and thereby helping me to improve my English. So, uh, and by the way, I forgot something. Even though I'm watching you virtually through this phone, I can understand that both of you look extremely stunning today. So, yeah, back on to the point. Uh, my first question is... Um, well, aren't there any methods by which you can speak English with a great accent uh, with full confidence? Because I've noticed people that people speak um, English very fluently. But once they come across a person who has a greater English fluency than them or a person who has a greater accent, their um, confidence seems to drop out all of a sudden and that is not good because uh, in such a situation the person uh, the other person starts to mumble and they may say something awkward and it's a total awkward scene so uh, I want you to give me simple uh, uh, quite a few tips on how to uh, avoid such a scenario and and how to improve our accent and uh, fluent um, confidence while speaking in English. Okay, now my second question is, uh, how can you, uh, now my second question is, uh, what do you feel uh, when you hear English from a different accent? That is, uh, you see, each country has a different accent of English. Like, for example, America has American English. Britain has British English. Uh... Australia has Australian English and India has Indian English. So all of these English languages has their own differences. Like, for example, their phrases might be different, their words might be different, and their meanings might be different. So I want you to explain me what are those differences. And uh, I want a few examples. It would be really great if you give, give them because it's fun to, uh, you see, I'll speak in different accents rather than a simple straight accent. So it would be nice. And now, okay, now on to my third 
and final question that is uh, what are the common mistakes that you find uh, when people speak in english uh, you see uh, people make minute mistakes while they speak in english and it's all common but but you see it is these small mistakes which leads to major mistakes so i want you to point me out those small small mistakes and uh, how to rectify them it will be really great now i have this additional question which would be really nice if you would answer me and that is uh, what are your thoughts on indian english like you see uh, when indians speak english it is true like the, uh, the indian may be however however qualified they may be when they speak most of the indians put a small a small pinch of indianism into it so i want to know what are your thoughts on this indianism in english it would be really great if i could get an answer on that anyway these are my three questions related to english language and i'm damn sure that you'll be able to answer all of my questions and clear all my queries thank you so much miss sandhya and miss juli for spending your valuable time to have an encounter converse, combo with me it was really fun uh, to talk with you guys thank you so much miss julie and miss santhya anyways uh, i hope you all have a wonderful day and um, have a nice day thank you so much stay safe and um, have a nice day thank you bye so far ha um i think these kind of go together quite a bit she yeah. was talking about methods for speaking english with fluency and confidence um what do you feel when you hear a different dialect or accent and then and she kind of elaborated on that in terms of my thoughts on indian english or indianisms um and so i'll talk about that quickly i think methods for speaking english fluently is practice 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 but i also think depending on i don't necessarily prefer the american accent i'm really drawn to proper british accent i think wow. there's like something so really? lovely yeah. about british yeah. english yeah, that's right. um and you know we were talking about that of and i'll elaborate that on a little bit when i'm talking about mistakes but um we were talking about expressions and i just think i love hearing british expressions yeah. that we don't use in the us yeah. and so that would be my preferred but i would say listen to english, english yeah. um this is kind of an aside i think I, i told you my husband's norwegian but he's very good at english when i met him he was more than fluent yeah. and he in fact doesn't even have an a, a norwegian accent, accent when he speaks yeah. english So we lived in Norway then we moved back to America and he and so it's same people were always like where do you come from oh. and they thought he was from Minnesota which is yeah. a, a state in in the US, in, in the US. States, yeah. that sometimes you know they have their own accent yeah, you know yeah. there's dialect within yeah, the US that's right if you're from New York you have a different accent yeah. if you're from Texas that's you right. have a southern accent if you're from Colorado I don't think I have an accent but so people say like oh you accent. have a Colorado or a, a neutral yeah. um but certainly Minnesota kind of has this midwestern accent right. so they thought my husband was from Minnesota and I was always like a little bit further north in uh, Norway yeah. but he used to watch the program and I don't know if you're familiar with this it's certainly on Netflix now but friends with right. like Jennifer oh, Aniston yeah. and yeah that's quite yeah, yeah. popular yeah but it was really popular in Norway in like the 90s yeah. and he insists that he learned english i mean certainly he learned english in school, school yeah. but he perfected english he was obsessed with this show friends yeah. and he really learned like humor and yeah. slang and those things the parts of speech that you don't learn in school you learn grammatics yeah. and proper you know pronunciation but you don't hear expressions That's and right. how people interact with each other and so i think my husband claims that he learned english through friends yeah. and so, as they say you know when you can understand the humor mm -hmm. that means you're really proficient in yeah, the yeah, language yeah. you know once you get the humor that means yeah you are a good right. listener and you are a good speaker i agree and i remember going to a movie one time with my sister-in-law here mm -hmm. and she's norwegian and again she's a pretty good english speaker yeah. 
but I don't think she gets some humor. Mm -hmm. And then also there was references in the movie that were very much American references, yeah. like to a certain restaurant or, yeah. and she, everyone in the audience was laughing well, and Svanhilde was laughing. And I said to her, do you understand what you're in? And she's like, no, no everybody so was she, laughing. I laughed a lot. She didn't get it. And so I agree with you. Like, I think once you get humor, you probably have a better yeah. grasp yeah. of the, truly a grasp of the language. Over the language so she yeah. was just, you know, laughing along because yeah. everyone was laughing but yeah. she had no idea what she was laughing at. <laughs> so, um, so I would say, you know, practice, listen, listen. certainly uh, music. Uh, sh I mean, everything's in English anymore. You can get on YouTube and listen to things in English, but we even encourage students here, like listen to movies in English. Yeah. And, you know, in Norway, they do a lot Actually. with subtitles in the Norwegian language. So there you're practicing reading, but you're hearing the audio in English. And I think it's just good to tune your ear. That's right. Um, and, so as far as common mistakes, I would say it's what we were just talking about, expression. Yeah. And I mean, certainly grammatical mistakes, but like expressions that, yeah. it, especially if you're uh, speaking like in a direct translation, I think we talked about this yeah. a little bit, yeah. translating direct from how you would Mother say it. Mother tongue to yeah, English. And that that's not the expression. Yeah. So I gave the example, my husband, I don't know if you'll, your girls will get, you girls will get this, but my husband was saying, stick with me, like let's stick it out like stay by my side and yeah. we'll get through this together and instead he said stick to me which literally means like glued, glued to my side and that's not the right expression so I would say the common mistakes yeah. might be yeah. expressions and like literal like how I discussed about the pass out thing to you yeah yeah you know pass if you, out yeah, if, if you, I say you know pass out you'll be like oh are you okay right everything was okay that day you know the same thing and the uh, same one more grammatical thing what I noticed in India is like using of beside and besides all right julie is sitting beside me mm -hmm. so sometimes they use she's sitting besides me besides meaning other than that besides the trees beneath the lake in william in william what's what point yeah, so yeah. besides is different and beside is different absolutely so these are the indian yeah. something the expressions would yeah. normally we use yeah but i think there will be mistakes made so it's and I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. So as far as that, and that will just tie back to what Fava was asking about, is that confidence piece. And I would just encourage you ladies just to be confident. Like I said, you all are gorgeous and such good speakers. And I see young girls. I feel sometimes more so even with girls. Um, so I have two teenagers. I have a 14-year-old girl and a 13-year-old yeah. boy. Right. And uh, I'm not trying to be sexist in any yeah. way. But the boys tend to not have as much inhibition. Yeah. They they hear music, they watch movies, and they're more they willing. Games. Yeah, they're gaming especially. They're more willing to speak English to me. Yeah. And the girls that come into our home are much more hesitant. And I try to encourage them and tell them what a good job they're doing. And so I would just say be confident in yourself and just try and... I think there's something so beautiful about strong women that are confident in That's who right. they are. And, but, um, I really want girls to have a voice and to That's speak right. out and be proud yeah. that they have an opinion and they have something to say. And so that would be my encouragement to you. Yeah. And so then Alina. Alina. Good morning, ma'am. It's an honor to have an interview session with you. So these three questions, which I'm going to ask is really from my life experience. Me and my friends continuously used to think about developing our language to speak in English, to speak like a native speaker. How can we bring this English or British accent in our sentences in the, when we speak? So my first question is, in our country, we speak English in a slightly different manner or in a different accent. So my friends used to ask me about speaking English exactly in British or American accent. So can you help us or give us some tips to improve our, the way we speak in English? This is my last and final question. We, most of us learn English in our school, but we really don't muster up the courage to speak to a native speaker or we lack confidence to speak towards them. So how can you help us to muster up the courage or to build the confidence to speak to a native speaker? Uh, Alina from 12th grade. It was like similar questions what uh, Farha has asked. It's a similar question. Yeah. Um, so uh, again, uh, she talked about the courage and confidence that Julie already told yeah. us. Uh, and speaking like a yeah. native speaker, 
I mean, certainly I can appreciate that you maybe want to tune your ear and say things correctly, but I would also encourage you not to lose your accent. I think it's beautiful yeah. where you come from. Yeah. And so don't speak like an American because you're not an American. I think it's wonderful to have an accent. A neutral that, accent yeah, is better. Yeah, you know? that identifies. Yeah. But, but certainly, I mean, if you want to be proficient in your language so that people can understand, that's important. But I would never encourage anyone to lose who they are. Yeah, the yeah. identity. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. So I think that's it. Uh, I think Julie has answered beautifully all the answers. So, yeah. So uh, this session was, uh, you know, why I aimed this session is to enhance your listening skills, you know. So that was the, you know, main point what I aimed at this, all right. So thank you again, Julie, for your time. I, re I don't know how to thank you for this. And I just want to mention also our mentor, our principal is Dr. Vijayan, sir. He is the one who has, you know, who is a pillar and strength of our school. Mm -hmm. So I really want to thank you, sir, again, for giving me an opportunity to talk and interact with my children as well. Absolutely. Yeah. It was so nice to see all of you. And I hope this was helpful. I was trying to speak slowly. I yeah. could tell very yeah, fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully you can understand. Yeah, yeah. But, okay. Have a good day. Same to you. Bye-bye.